it used to be difficult to build real-time apps. You had to write complex server code and deploy distributed systems. But that's all changed. With tools like React and Firebase you can build real-time apps without a single line of server code. As long as you can afford it. Firebase is a great tool as long as you structure your code to avoid exorbitant bills. Even then, your project and data is permanently locked into Google Cloud. If only there was a way to build real-time apps as easily as you can with Firebase while also not being punished for success. Well with Redis you can. Redis Store lets you use any Redis instance as your document store as long as you install the Redis JSON module. In fact, it's a drop-in replacement to Firebase's Firestore so you can use it in your existing apps. With tools like React and Redis Store you can build a basic real-time chat app from scratch in less than 5 minutes. The app we'll build today is live on the internet so you can check it out. If you're new to this, you can follow the code on GitHub. Before we get started, let's quickly take a look at what we'll be building today. It's a single group chat app that everyone can participate in. To enter the chat, a user must log in with their Google account. Once logged in, they can post messages into the chat. A message is a document in the Redis database. It contains the text, user id, and the timestamp of the message. At the same time we make a query to the database for the most recent message. Whenever the underlying data changes on the back end, the React app will update with the most recent messages on the front end. It's very easy to implement, and at the end of the video you'll have a great starting point for building any type of real-time app. Let's open up the terminal, and then I'll set a timer. Open up your terminal and set up a new React app with Vita. Run code, followed by the name of your app, to open it in VS Code. We have three other dependencies to install. Firebase, React Firebase Hooks, and Redis Store. We'll only use Firebase for authentication. Our real-time database will be Redis. It'll be good to see how similar they are side by side. Open up the app.tsx file, which is where we'll write all of our front-end code. First we'll import the Firebase SDK with auth, and we'll do the same for Redis Store. We'll rename the import so we can call it like Firebase code. We'll import a few hooks here to make it easier to work with Firebase, Redis Store, and React. We'll call Firebase Initialize app to identify our project. We'll also call Redispace Initial app to connect to our Redis Store server. For this example, I'll connect to a running Heroku instance and a running Firebase project, but you can also run things locally as well. Now we need to architect this app. The scaffold is dead simple. When the user is logged out, we'll show a sign in component. When the user signs in, we'll show the chat room. Knowing whether or not a user is logged in is dead simple with the use auth state hook. When the user is logged in, it returns an object with a user id, email address, and other information. When the user is logged out, the user object is null. With that, we can use a simple ternary operator to show the chat room when the user is logged in and a sign in button when logged out. Now we have to think about how to sign in. In the sign in component, we'll show a button and listen to its on click even to sign in with Google. Inside that function we'll instantiate a provider called the Google Auth provider. Then we pass it to the sign in with pop-up method which will trigger this pop-up window when the user clicks on the button. We'll also make a sign out button. In that component, we'll check to see if we have a current user and display a button that calls the sign out function on Auth. Now we can build our chat room. In Redis Store, we have a collection of messages. When a user sends a message in this chat, it creates a document in this database with the message along with their timestamp and id. In our code we make a reference to this point in the database by calling redisstore.collection. We can and make a query for a subset of documents which we want ordered by the created at timestamp and limited to a maximum of 25. We can then make this query and listen to any updates to the data in real time with the use collection data hook. It returns an array of objects where each object is the chat message in the database. And again, any time the data changes, React will re-render with the latest data. In the template we can map over the array of messages, and for each message we'll use a dedicated chat message component that has a key prop with the message id, and passes the document data as the message prop. We can then go and define the chat message child component. We can show the actual text by accessing it from the props message. When we display chat messages, we want to distinguish between what was sent and what was received. 
We can do that by comparing whether the messages user id is the same as the currently logged in user. If they are equal, then we know the current user sent the message. We can then apply different styling based on whether the message was sent or received. You can add a photo URL here as well. So now we need a way in the UI for the user to send a message. We can start that feature off by adding a form underneath the messages list. The form will be a single input, and then a button to submit the message. What we want to do from there is add a stable value to our chat room component called form value. We can do that with the use state hook, and have it start as an empty string. We can then go down the the input itself and bind its value to the form value state. Whenever the user types into the form, it triggers the change event. So we'll listen to the on change event and we'll take the value of the change and set it as the form value state. That takes care of the value being set by the form, but now we need a way to write it to the database. When the user clicks the button or submits the form we can listen to the on submit event on the form itself, and we'll trigger an event handler called send message. We'll define this as an async function that takes the event as a parameter. Normally, when a form is submitted, it refreshes the page. We'll call prevent default to stop that from happening. Then we'll grab the user id and the photo from the currently logged in user. Then we'll call await messages ref add which will create a new document in the database. It takes a JavaScript object as its argument with the values that you want to write to the database. The text will be the form value we'll give it the user id and photo as well. That await will resolve when the document is created. Finally, we can reset our form value back to the empty string. At this point, if you run the app, you can see data being written to the database. Our main problem now is that the app doesn't look very good. We can fix that by copy and pasting the CSS from the repo into our app.css. The moral of the story is that Redis and React are simple but CSS is much harder. Finally, it would be cool if our messages automatically scrolled into view. We can do that by adding an empty div below our list of chat messages. We can then reference that element with the ref prop, and connect it to our code with the use ref hook. Now that we have a reference to this element, we can go back to the send message function, and we'll call scroll into view whenever the user sends a message. We now have a feature complete, production ready app, built on Redis. I'll wrap things up here. If you enjoyed this video, star the Redis store repo on GitHub to show your love. Thanks for watching.